welcome students to the online NPTEL course uh, Contemporary Architecture and Design. In the previous lecture, we uh, have given a brief um, introduction about the modern uh, world architect uh, architecture and design. And today, we will discuss uh, uh, um, mainly on the post industrial revolution. And in post um, industrial revolution, there were two parts as we discussed earlier, which was uh, for the machine movement and another is against the machine movement. So, uh, in the post industrial revolution, uh, this is just a brush up of the what we have uh, discussed earlier, the in, uh, agriculture to industry um, was there um, and um, people started migrating from a village to city and then there was increase uh, in um, um, steel, uh, st uh, the, the new technology um, as we, um, for example, steel and glass and then um, the new uh, kind of products uh, started evolving and then there was a new um, requirement for uh, new kind of buildings for example, commercial, residential and public amenities. In totality, there was a crisis in architecture and art on design style and then the, the genesis of two extremely radical styles was evolved. And uh, then again, we were discussing uh, there was one, one style was traditional craftsmanship one um, uh, set of architects um, started uh, following that and the another se uh, set of architect uh, embraces the new technological aesthetics. So, two different style was there for the machine movement which was correlated with the new technological aesthetics, the machine uh, aesthetics and the another uh, style was uh, the against the machine movement which uh, was uh, following towards the um, uh, corresponding to tra traditional craftsmanship. Now, in the for the machine movement, what happened? What are the features of the for the machine movement? They embraced the new technology and new style evolved from the new technology. Then the in architecture, the steel frames and uh, trusses uh, are, uh, became the beautifying element. As we uh, will also see and uh, um, have discussed earlier as well, in the crystal palace, the truss becomes the beautifying element and that is the form of the building and there was no other uh, added element there. So, that um, the uh, new technological style evolved from new technology, new, uh, new style evolved from the uh, new technology and the prefabrication and mass production was another plus point of uh, this um, industrial evolution um, and uh, they, uh, they started, uh, there was a possibility of uh, fabricating on the same design uh, again and again, but that was uh, in the opposition of the craftsmanship of uh, the hand um, crafts of old craftsmanship and this uh, started opposing the um, old craftsmanship and then explored the uh, classicism to derive a structural paradigm. So, classical architecture style as we were discussing earlier was also evolved from the structure. So, if we look at the Parthenon which is striated structure which is like this and the Pantheon which is just a dome and um, placed and in front of that there was a, again a structure like this. So, these evolved from a structural um, design which is also there in the um, for the machine movement. So, in the for the machine movement, uh, these two are the very important building, one, one is Crystal Palace uh, London uh, designed by Joseph Paxton and Eiffel Tower in Paris designed by Alexander Gustav Eiffel. And then um, also uh, this, this mainly started in Europe and also it uh, percolated in America as well. Uh, so, in America, uh, the, I, um, the Statue of Liberty was designed by uh, 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 Bartholdi, but uh, then uh, structural design was done by again Gustav Eiffel himself. So, in uh, against the machine movement, we will discuss in the next uh, class. Uh, there was two different uh, movements, art and craft movement and art nouveau, which was extremely opposite to for the machine movement. And then there were um, uh, artisans and um, ornate design was the key features. Uh, artisans. Uh, 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 craftsmanship and ornate features was the key feature of these two art movement art and uh, architecture movement. So, here uh, are some example of um, for the machine movements. So, this is crystal palace, if you, uh, if you look at the crystal palace, uh, what we were discussing the form evolved from the structure and the structural elements are actually the beautifying elements. The these are the steel uh, strasses and the steel members which are um, uh, visible from outside and that is the ornamentation, no other added ornamentation was superficially added. Then again, if we look at the Eiffel Tower, uh, this celebrates the structural um, innovation and uh, this was uh, that time the tallest uh, tower and uh, Gustav Eiffel uh, designed it and uh, uh, that time achieving this height was uh, a marvel and uh, this um, uh, was only possible because of the invention of uh, steel and new technology.
So, and if you look at the design style, they also evolved, uh, if you look at carefully, they also evolved a particular style of design uh, through uh, the structural members and the um, uh, and the structure strengthening members. So now if we look at the um, style which was there, even the rivets and the strusses which creates a uh, particular aesthetic pattern. And uh, this is a, a rail station during that time. And then if we look at what was there in the industrial design, actually the industrial design um, elements came first and then this was also percolated in the architecture architect, uh, 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 architecture style and then from these styles which was evolved based on the engineering uh, marvel was adopted as a visual element first this came as a engineering um, requirement because all these uh, rivets and everything this was the requirement of engineering and then uh, everything was uh, formed based on the um, a function requirement. Uh, this was the hood and all these elements. This was absolutely functional element, and no other uh, design elements were added. This is Alexander Graham Bell's uh, first telephone. Now, if we look at these style of um, um, industrial design and architecture, and that evolved later. And why this uh, started evol uh, evolving? Because if this was confined uh, only in uh, some um, few um, uh, design this couldn't have been um, spread so much uh, for example in the earlier um, architecture this was only confined into the um, cathedral um, uh, palaces and um, uh, building of rich people but in, in after industrial evolution there was a uh, uh, few products which was uh, for daily uh, usage and everybody um, started using that. For example, it was earlier camera which was uh, huge in length and Kodak designed a new camera which was uh, very handy and this was a caption. You press the button and we do the rest and it was to um, uh, capture uh, common people's uh, notice and uh, they were the customer for this camera. And earlier this was definitely common people were not able to buy this camera. And uh, with the invention of telephone and uh, car, many of the people started using it. Even, uh, even the railway uh, was for everybody and the print, printing press of uh, Gutenberg uh, uh, and all uh, most of the inventions was um, spread uh, to the bottom of the pyramid. It was earlier it was only uh, for the top of the pyramid if this is the martial arts pyramid and now after industrial evolution it percolates and it captures the total pyramid of um, the society. Now uh, if we look at the uh, style, so utilitarian built form in architecture exposing the structure was a style. Now uh, this is the Milan railway station and here you can look at the ornamentation here and this part is actually this part is um, is clubbed uh, with the um, um, uh, uh, and um, can be clubbed with each, uh, each other. This is not uh, uh, for the machine movement because if you look at this uh, is a manifestation of the previous architectural movement and then which is clubbed with the uh, railway stations. Um, uh, main area. So this was the platform and uh, here uh, because here uh, it requires a larger span. Larger span cannot be um, designed with uh, stone and this is a concrete um, uh, building. So uh, it cannot be designed by concrete. So you have to use steel but steel elements are used and that was um, juxtaposed with the uh, concrete uh, design. And again, this is uh, the market of um, Euro Euro uh, European markets. You can see the similar elements were there in the design. So, uh, if we look at the styles of uh, industrial revolution um, uh, for the machine movement after industrial revolution, so uh, uh, genesis of high modernism came uh, from. Um, the industrial revolutions uh, for the uh, machine movement because uh, in the late modern we if we uh, look at all the, uh, many of the movements um, started embracing the uh, machine aesthetics and the aesthetic new aesthetic uh, which is generated with the um, e um, evolution of uh, machine and then there was a cut off as we were discussing earlier from the earlier style which was more figurative and more on it and then uh, the uh, uh, modern became very abstract and geometric.
so which was also there from the for the machine movement for the machine movement if you look at the uh, crystal palace which, uh, this was absolutely geometric and then this was uh, this was a, a vault this was uh, the cuboid and then in uh, Eiffel Tower, it was also there was uh, uh, much more geometry than the previous architectural styles, and uh, the new uh, designs like this um, camera is absolutely a cuboid, and then. Um, even the uh, designs uh, strass if if you if you design a strass which is like uh, biomorphic which will be m uh, much difficult to uh, uh, design so they have designed a strass which is uh, a pure vault so uh, geometry and uh, mass production uh, ge geometry was a style and because it was geometric mass production was easy if that was a biomorphic and ornate style mass production could have been much difficult which will relate to craftsmanship of uh, artisans which were uh, related to the older styles then purity of material and color this we will discuss um, uh, uh, further in detail that material as it was it was exposed for example in the strass it was uh, not they uh, they didn't paint the strass in a different um, color and uh, the uh, material of the strass the steel was exposed and they wanted to show the uh, power and the beauty of the steel which was also there in the international style which was in the late modern style and the color uh, the pure color of the material was also there um, uh, followed in the international style which was there in the for the machine movement and then in Bauhaus there was another uh, colors were added the only the primary color and the mater materials color and the uh, white and uh, white gray and uh, black which was the neutral color was added then structure um, as aesthetics as structure was um, uh, designed that was kept as the aesthetic element which was there in the Eiffel Tower itself is just a structural uh, uh, member and then services as aesthetics uh, the services which was there was exposed and those were, uh, became the aesthetic elements now we will discuss um, see how these different uh, styles which was there if we look at the design palette these was the design palette of uh, for the machine movement and how these designs were later translated in the uh, architectural style of the later phases so in art deco we will discuss um, these in detail when we um, uh, will discuss these architectural style later but here you can uh, quickly relate this is a for the machine movement which was uh, which came uh, from pure construction which is a crystal palace and this is art deco um, chrysler building and uh, here you can see the similarity of the um, design and again the structural members were added but there was some ornamentation as we were discussing art deco has a connection with the art novo as well so if we look at the gargoyle's face so this has some ornamentation which was definitely not there in the for, for the machine movement which was added but there was this um, similarity of uh, geometric um, geometrically breaking the form so this uh, um, eagle's face or the gargoyle's face could have been a figurative um, element but that was broken in geometry so that it can be produced in a uh, industry and again if we look uh, this is Tamar de Olympica's painting this is a man which could have been painted in a, a figurative way but it has uh, broken in a machine made uh, structure so, so that you can look at this is like a folded metal so his uh, wardrobe is like a folded metal and you can sh uh, see the uh, shine and then uh, the face and all the elements are, are broken in somewhat uh, similar to geometric uh, form which is not as um, biomorphic as it should be so the lines are uh, following each other uh, each other and this line is continuing and this line is following and then some lines which you can draw which breaks the um, um, composition in geometry so this was uh, examples from art deco then in the later stages internationalism style this is uh, a chair um, uh, or sofa designed by Le Corbusier and this is a uh, Francois house uh, by uh, Van der Rohe you can see uh, the elements just the um, structural elements were there and this is a pure box and this uh, sofa is also uh, like a pure box which has a uh, some uh, stylistic uh, value was borrowed from there and the purity of material this uh, steel stainless steel is not painted and pure black and pure white and uh, glass was used and also if you look at Bauhaus Bauhaus also has a pure color um, in um, their visual style
Then structure as aesthetics, here as you see the stru uh, structure is as um, uh, exposed as aesthetics, but here uh, later the structural um, technique and uh, construction technique evolved and then uh, they were, uh, they could have, uh, they, they had the um, option to uh, carve the structure into a different aesthetic form, but the structure is itself uh, created the form, but there was no other facade treatment to create a form. So, this is actually a structural member. So, if you um, and this is taking the load of the building and that is creating the uh, TWA terminals uh, form which looks like a bird which will uh, uh, which uh, is kind of about to take off. And then uh, this is a uh, st streamlined design, the, uh, so this is this is uh, from the uh, phase of streamlined design. So, there was this curve and all these things which were uh, ergonomic or functionally generated. So, this, this curve is uh, there for the, um, uh, for the ease of um, um, uh, movement and this, is, this came from the fluid uh, dynamics so that the uh, uh, air can pass properly. But still you can see the, the curvature and all these things are there. Now, another thing is uh, services as aesthetics. So, this uh, again in the uh, structure as aesthetics, this was the uh, structure of the ch uh, chassis of the car and that was left as, as it is and that was exposed and that create, uh, creates the form of the car. Now, uh, services as aesthetics, if you uh, look at the, all the services here and um, uh, rainwater pipelines and everything will be exposed over here and that part was uh, translated in the uh, Pompidou center of uh, Paris, so all the services which were color coded to ex um, accentuate the, um, uh, their presence and exposed in the building facade. So, this building facade is all the services are exposed and that became the style of the building. And then again if you uh, look at the nude bike um, uh, design, again the services and the, all the um, elements or, um, uh, and structural elements were visible. So, this was also also has some connection with the uh, for the machine movement. And the next class we will uh, discuss about the uh, uh, against the machine movement which is art and craft movement and art novo. Thank you.